Hey, so I thought I'd show uh, doing a little bit of layout of that filter we just designed. Um, I messed around with it a bit, which I didn't film, uh, and I decided it's quite it was quite good to add a bit more um, feedback because it makes it a little bit louder. Um, and I found this value uh, I could get just before clipping. I also did some working out. Um, this is a little bit too hot. If I'm putting a 10 volt peak to peak signal in here, the uh, the the uh, gain is a bit high and it does clipping, but I quite quite like it. Quite like the way it sounds. I'm not trying to make a perfect filter. I'm actually trying to make something that uses a little as little parts as possible that's quite functional. Um, yeah. Sorry about my hair. I haven't washed it. Oops. Uh, I just need to double check. Um, use the original schematic as a reference. Where is it? The original one. Show me this frame. Probably expand it a bit so we can see. Maybe down a bit. It's the filter. Maybe I'll open the PDF. Don't know if that's clear. I've got a paper version here so I can see. Um, I So I started laying it out. I can see already I'm missing the 1k resistor here. This is a volt this is a voltage divider that divides the signal down by one tenth because the um, OTA distorts if you put too much in it, and I kind of like that. I'm not, yeah, like I said, I'm not trying to make a beautiful clean thing. Um, so yeah, I've got that. The control voltage. Huh. Cut off frequency. Yet you can't see the dialogue. I'm turning these pots into a hundred K. I messed around with these two values. This one's fine as it is, and I liked the sound when this one was increased. Not it's not quite right, but like when you're making musical things you can, you can get away with stuff. You know, there's right and then there's interesting. So the cutoff goes between Shame you can't see the dialogue here. Cutoff goes between plus and minus twelve volts. I haven't actually checked what values these should be.
I'll say they're 10k, but maybe they don't need to be. I might do some working out afterwards. Because there definitely needs to be two resistors here, but I don't know what that is. I'm not going to have two CV inputs. So I've got... Um, audio in one. Audio in two. Going to two 100k resistors, voltage divider. We're not using the linearizing diode. Four has feedback to the output and feedback to, well, one from the first, second stage and one from the first stage. Well, that one's 20k and that one's 10, 75k. I actually did these for 70 just because it's a more common value. It worked for me. 20k meter resistors. I might play with that once I've produced it. These will affect the gain. Um, I was. I have this quite cool. This little resistor board. It's quite good for selecting resistors. Okay. Then pin five. Is through a buffer. Twenty k to minus twelve. There's capacitor in between the buffer, and then there's 20k between the two stages. So we're cutting it down again. Ah, it's missing the. It's missing the second. Voltage divider here. Now I question why. Why this one doesn't have the 1k? Ah, oh, there's something we're missing on the other side. To balance the input offset voltage is two of them. tested it but really surely we should have the same here that's something to go back and test on the prototype the, the purpose of it is to um, decrease the effect of uh, input offset voltage if the impedances are the same. And there's the capacitor on the output, then that's the low pass output. I've put one cage just because it's a stand, it's just what we have in the Euro rack, but um and it's fine because the emitter resistor is no, it's not fine. Mm. That's a bit of a problem. Because we don't have a buffer. Because we don't have a buffer, it's... Um, I mean, the output drive would be. Oh, yeah. Depends when you're below. Oh, no, it's below 12 volts. 
it seems to work. I definitely don't think this module will be immune to different loading situations. Maybe even um, cables. Cables, um, cable length might affect it. But the way I see it is it's a uh, compromises are for its simplicity it's certainly not a commercial product now to avoid mm, 470 PFs a bit high Ideally, I'd like to put some decoupling on it, but I don't think I will. I'll put it there just in case. I'll probably... It's a shame because if these were bigger capacitors, I would have done that. Used those. <coughs> Use those values. Now we probably want to. Want the connector. Would not use put in a D shocky diode. One and two is negative. I might just flip that. Right. One and two is negative. Definitely essential to have reverse polarity protection, but in this case, because we're not like running a micro or anything, it might not be necessary to have the capacitors here because. trying to keep it minimal and I can't really see the advantage of them because we're sort of making a self oscillating thing anyway and we have these um, capacitors it's one and two is negative is nine and ten so we're using a two times two times five shouted header that should be it really very simple. Look at the parts that you can't see this. Let me just create this. It's annoying how this works. Uh, so I've got four, I've got shocky diodes. I've got Five jacks. No, that is. Let's call that zero. Jack. Correct. Twenty k. Since five k, led a hundred k's. A lot of resistors. Two pots. Great. Save. I can like will it pop up again. Oh, amazing. Love that. These 1Ks 
their main job would be just if there's a short on an outfit it won't kill it too much. I've already checked before that I'm not overdoing the CV. There's no way I can the what if I use calculator the worst current is it to ground? at the data sheet. The bias. Yeah, no, it's the negative. Go through a couple of diodes to negative. So the highest current that I could possibly go would be 12 volts, 24 volts, divided by 100k, 100 would, equal, would, would equal 2.4, 2 no, 0 0.24 milliamps. Yeah, of course. And the axle absolute maximum is 2 milliamps no, the bias current 2 milliamps yeah that's right that's pretty safe I'm not really worried about too much voltage there these are pretty well protected. If you put too much, if you put an output into this, yeah, that's fine. Should be fairly robust. Look at the internal schematic again. Yeah, it's fine. It's just. Too You're never gonna. If you put it down to minus twelve, you reverse by. You not. You wouldn't even be reverse biasing it because it, they're already biased to minus twelve. You might blow it up if you did more than minus twelve. That's n not likely at all in Eurorack. Let's double check the absolute max supply voltage. Yeah, so the DC input voltage can be anywhere between the rails. The differential voltage maximum is 5 volts. We're way below that because we're dividing like it's 1 one hundredth. Buffer output current maximum is 20 milliamps. So say if this somehow miraculously, because it doesn't because whilst it's passed through, it doesn't. Say if that was 12 volts to ground. That's 12 divided by a thousand, that's 1.2 milliamps. No, 0 0.12 milliamps. I'm not very good at maths. Oh, 12 milliamps. And it's saying the buffer maximum current output is 12. Oh, perfect. Yep. Can't do maths. 12 to 1000 is 0 0.012. Okay. Great. It's a lot of resistors. Good not to have these. I wonder if I just didn't have them. I've got it set up here without them. Let me just, if you can hear this.
this. Why is it silent? Can't get any audio out of it. Why? That's strange. Oh, wait. See, this is at max. I don't know, I don't want to ride right up to the rails. It's bad enough that I'm just doing resistors to the rails. I'll leave it. And the value was... Maybe I'll make them 1Ks. But I'll wipe that out once I've got the board back. That seems pretty good to me. Just do an idiot check. Got emitter resistors, got the capacitors, got the cutoff, the um, current control, got the balancing resistors, not connecting those, got two inputs on the tip, there's the feedback, and the outputs. This one's band pass. This one's low pass. Great. Now I just need to assign the footprints. Let's do that thing. So here's the shrink it down um, and do through hole for this and have some parts already it's a D sub damn it I'm going to have to do another one Use the default. Uh, default header. The jacks. I'm use my audio jacks library. It's the what's it called? PJ. I can't remember what the new one's called. It's 31M. The resistors. Apart from variable one. Oops. Apart from variable one. Do I have a symbol for that? Through hole. What's my symbol for that? I don't think I have that. I'm just going to use keycards. Uh, 
want, want a nice... What have I used in the past? Yeah, I used one. It's good to have a bit of space. Oh, it's quite hard. 7.62. Capacitors, I'd like to use five. I want to use through hole five millimeter ones. Diodes, I have a nice one that I designed. It's just nice and chunky. That one. Where is it? That one. And the two pots. I have the Alps one here. And I'll just use the default library for dips. Dip sixteen. I like a nice wide footprint like that. There you go. Very simple. Now if we go to the board. Oh. Oh. Shame it does that. Now we're going to do the board layout. Three update. Get the parts in. Um, now for layout. I haven't actually thought about this. Quite like to keep into the. I'm not going to do the panel just yet. But put a grid of one millimeter. So now you can't see the pull downs. Uh, I want to do an 8 HP speaker, so if you look here, this is the best reference, the dope for reference, we can do a, no, a 6 HP one, I think that would be good, 30 millimeters, um, so we want to keep within um, PCP pooling standards, so it would be 100 millimeters high. edge cuts and I just draw it 90 degrees 100 30 100 there you go quite good to I like put user comments, dimensions. Now I'm going to try and put this all within. I'm going to try and put this all within the board. So there's only two boards. It will make it nice and compact. And this is the whole reason I'm doing this is because it'd be good to. It's got to be really simple. My aim for this is to make it really simple. Here's a useful trick if you don't know it in KeyCAD. Is you can say if I want all the parts associated with this core bit here, you see. You select it in the schematic and then this it will be selected and then you right click unfortunately you can't see it and you press pack and move and you can get them all together what are these resistors part of? right let's just move these resistors to one side I've got to think about the way that it's laid out um, obviously we want cut off, cut off at the top Sound. 
cut off at the top. Resonance in the middle. Two audio inputs. Two audio outputs. L I put low pass at the bottom and high pass at the top. Where's CV? Oh, I haven't got CV. What's the point in that? I won't tie... I won't tie it to ground when it's disconnected. Uh oh, that was looking so good. Now I don't have enough space. I wanted to put two audio inputs because I thought it might be quite neat to, to uh, chain a few filters up and then have a feedback. That I'm not sure. I've got to think of where to put power. It's going to be quite compact. Right, and also I've got to think. I'm looking. From the front, but actually I think I put the I'm pressing F putting all the connectors on the opposite side so they'll be do I have Small. Stick it here. Do you see these parts will all these parts will all be on the front, and then if you flip it round, then the panel will go here. It'll be really compact. Hopefully, it should be very simple and cheap to make, basically. Now I want to add a guideline. It's quite handy to put in guidelines even though KiCad really doesn't have one. But I'll do it at like... If you hit spacebar, I don't know if you can see down here. You can, you can see the distance from where you just hit spacebar. So I've done it 15 across. Put in this central line. It's just a guide to show. And then when you don't want to see it, you can just turn it off, you see. Now, I don't know what grid to do this on. I could do half of 15, 7.5, see what that looks like. I won't need it up here, so I'll just do it down here. Space. Oh, I need to put it on a 0.5 grid. So. 
7.5 just do it somewhere arbitrary like 50 oh, where's 90 degrees 9.1 9 degrees, what? oh there it is 50 so the same on this side minus Five fifty. Don't know if that works. always best to start with than this. It's on an opposite side so it can overlap a little bit like this. See. So does that mean it's 7.5 now be 15 between two jacks. If I compare it, to, I'm just going to go check a few other modules. thing is what I'm wondering is whilst it might be quite nice to have 15 between there you have to think about what might be next to it I might move them until they're about 12 so what's that line No. Twelve would be half. The difference between twelve and fifteen is three, so I have to move them one and a half in. Oops. Well, it's three halves. That might be a bit close now. And what are they apart? Twelve. Oh, I've messed this up again. I keep closing this. Wait, sorry. I remember to minimise it. Yeah, mm. I think. S oh, I did it again. Sorry. to minimise it. I think. I actually think. Oops. I'll move them one millimetre outwards each, so that'll make it 14. Roughly 14. It's in the 3D viewer. Yeah, I think 14 is good.
I should really come up with a standard for this, I don't know though. I'm going to put these like this. Because if you think, I actually might draw that in actually now. I'll put in an outline that mimics the front panel. Put in user comments. So it has to be 128.5 if you look at the. Oh, I did it again! The problem is, is when I close, I'm used to closing the 3D window. So if you look, it's um it's one twenty eight point five. I've got that memorized because it comes up so much. It's a Dopefer says the final height of the panels is a bit less one thirty three foot four, taking into the rim of the rail. So their final height is one twenty eight point five. Hidden behind it. One twenty eight point five. Does it shrink? So I need to draw. 128.5 what's 28.5 is what's left divided well, by 2 so it's 14.25 an easy trick you could do is, is the important thing about keycard is to use the grid to prevent yourself from going off piste. So we need to go 14.25. Duplicate that and put it up here. So now we've got a guide we can use to draw. See, it's 30. Thirty times one twenty eight point five, which is six HP panel. So if you see, we probably want to get this as low as we possibly can. There, perhaps. They don't seem to be on the same grid as each other. If we look, 150. I, don't know, I still don't understand why it goes a grid like that. 156. At the same height now. Sorry, you probably couldn't see that dialogue. Get it right down like that. Then we can do this trick where we share these pads together. Makes it nice and compact. It'd be good if it was sort of square. So what, there to there. It's 13. That's there, it's 14, yeah. Sort of works. Wait, 
Wait, is this one a funny grid? Yeah. I think I originally placed them on an odd grid, like a sub millimeter grid. See, that's the thing in KiCad. If you place something on a funny grid, it can be quite hard to get away from it. Oh, that's working. What's this distance? How does it look? I mean, 3D viewer can be quite deceptive. So it's going to be all two audio inputs, two audio outputs, and a CV. Do I put the CV asymmetrically off to the left? That might be a bit more beneficial, to be honest. Because it's like inputs and outputs. The socket will have to go there, but it's quite convenient anyway. You want it's quite hard to find the actual center. We want the Oh I did it again, didn't I? Oh bleeding hell. Minimize it, then close it. Um, let's see this. Twenty eight. This is one twenty eight, and this is on. Why is it on a funny grid? And keep it on the millimeter grid. Wait a minute, but now I've moved that up, this, is this one a funny grid? Yeah, what is, what did I do? This is a little bit wrong. I can't be bothered to fix it right now. I thought I'd fixed it in the part. It's very frustrating because the, the key, some, it snaps to something else here. I think it's the key pout text. If I move the key pout out of the way, not even necessary to be honest. No, there's something else there that it snaps to. Thirteen. Best thing really is to draw lines. So if we go to user drawings, what grid are we on? Let's put ourselves on say two point five grid. Edge of the board is here. Hide this one. Because I can very cleanly measure lines. In fact, if I turn this back on, I can then go that's 13, that's 15. 
we want it to be in the same grid. 15. Fourteen, thirteen, not sure if these are going to fit together like that do they? Oh they are. They work together, it's just it breaks the, um, the footprints have uh, courtyards that overlap but actually they're quite loose. If you look how it's going to be. Uh, so yeah, our left and our right needs flipping over. Because it's from the back. Quite a common mistake to make. Put this connected this way round just to fit with the standard of negative negative downwards. Put our diodes in. I don't like this K. Make it visible. Use the, I'm going to get rid of Fab just to make it look a bit cleaner. Hide the comments. Now the pots. I want this to be as high as possible at the top. I might just go reference of other designs. So I have some designs that have pots about 20 apart, but I find them a bit close. So I probably want to do about 30. Drawings. What distance is that on? Seven millimeters down. Then I want to do thirty. work. It's 32 extreme. Also, am I limiting the space? Am I limiting the space? I can put the... How does that look in 3D? You have to try and imagine. It looks a bit strange because the the pot at the top. Also, we don't want to be too too close to the jacks. Maybe I'll do a bit less than 30. I don't like 20, but maybe I'll do 25. That looks a bit more balanced. Oh, I did it again. I 
I don't have the 3D model for that. That looks more balanced now. And the only problem is I haven't done is I need to find out where I can place this and it needs to have a lot of resistors coming off it. Maybe I do need to have it quite compact. I might actually put this upside down as well. Let's give us a good space here. There's no space at all. This might be tricky. I still don't know why. Can I hack these in lower to give some space for the... This will give us a bit more space around here. But now that's encroaching on the... Oh, and I've done it to th uh, Sorry, I must be annoying complaining about it all the time. How often do I have to do this? Bleeding hell. So. Just can place all these components. markings inside. A lot of resistors. So what do I what can I do? First of all R twelve and R six. They go to the pots. Definitely. Wait. Oh, they go to the jacks. Sorry. It's just enough space I can fit one there. Where's our six? We try and get as many of the resistors and capacitors away from the main chip as possible. R9 and R8. Other parts, jacks. Looks like that one. Where else? Where else? Oh, seven goes to this part. I guess it could just go sort of its way out, isn't it? Be left or right. These two resistors are like range limiting. Ooh. Range limiting resistors. 18, what's our 18? Oh yeah, that's the CV. I can go 
give it a good look. Got most of those in, but I'm going to have to fit all of these resistors somehow in this space. Oh, why did the capacitors look like resistors? Wait a minute. Um, you won't be able to see this, I'm just checking. C1 and C2, yeah, these resistors for them for some reason. Capacitor through hole. Sorry, forgive me, you won't be able to see this. We want 5 millimeter disc. Okay. Axial. What? C1 and C2, oh, C3 and C4. Give me disk five millimeter. Is that five millimeter? How does two point five four? That's two point five four. Uh, no, I don't want two point five. Oh, I've closed the three D to be again. Forgive me, you're going to see a load of floating things. Save. See now they're little ceramic discs. So we want these. We'll update. Oh, C3 and C4 still haven't changed why. So you want me to see this? I'm going to stop mentioning it, it's so annoying. Oh, what am I doing? Forgive me. I want... You can't see what I'm doing because it's hidden. But Minimize it. Don't close it. Capacitors. And now correct. C3 and C4. I've got to try and fit all these resistors into a fairly compact space. Do some routing first.
I'm not even going to bother making them compact. Always check the capabilities of your manufacturer. Trace width. One to two layers. Not point one two seven. I will do not put two fives fine. I think of doing a ground pour to hide these comments. I will do a ground pour. Oh, not a couple there on the front copper. Ground. I don't know why I'm not doing. then so the front has a, well it's not the front it's the back I think that's good because that's good because we'll be messing with components on this side and this might not be accessible so it's good if the ground pool actually is on the other side Grandpa's on the other side, and the routing is on this side. We have 12 volts coming in here. I should. Should be strict. It's really good to be strict. I might make this tray slightly thicker. Fires. How big are the default fires? That would do. Do Manhattan style layout. I know it seems a bit crazy to do that, but it actually helps um, if any more traces have to come through. Put the power. Is it C1? No. C3 is the positive rail. So I'll just put it in there. So I'll just put this here. Here. I don't really want it's a bit far away from the pin. But it's close enough. if you don't know the coupling caps are meant to be very meant to be as close as possible to the pin oh I've closed the 3D viewer again 
Really sorry, everybody. My one viewer. Um. Ideally, they should be right here. But I'm worried about the components. So, I think I'll first do these 1k resistors because there's loads of them. 13 and 16. They go to ground, so that makes routing quite easy. They need to connect there. I mean, they can be off to the side. That these two are the equivalent. I guess they could be up here. It's a bit compact this because I've decided to try and keep the boards down to a minimum. It's the aim of this project is to be quite minimal. It'd be nice if this is nice if this capacitor, which is twelve. Close either. We should go out. We should go in. And we need this capacitor, the other filter. Oh, that's quite good. Sure, the marking is underneath. I might move them out. Ideally, I have them out. So R1 goes between 8. Maybe that's the one that goes across. Goes from 8 to 14. 8 to 14. So it would be good to go around this way might move the whole lot up annoyingly I can't drag the part to looking at it now this part would be better somewhere like here that gives me plenty of space Put the three, this one that goes between the two stages. And then I need to think of the emitter resistors R3, which goes to. Oh, that's quite easy. To minus 12. Of the other one, R4 be on the opposite side. It can be sort of here somewhere. Oh wow, I'm doing it. R11, so the feedback goes from 9 to 4. I know that it goes up this way, so it could even just fit here. I don't know, wait, there's another feedback resistor, isn't there? This one comes from a pot. Could go up here. Wow, I've done it. This one's a feedback, it comes from the middle. No, it comes from there. That one's going to be a tricky routing job. If I move these down. I wonder if because these are common. No, there's not enough space. Oh, 
off, so I could do a trick. Let's go up here. I want to keep it. I have to be careful to keep it quite spacious. the 3D viewer is how it's going to be laid out. Is that easy to solder? I like the way that I like to keep it all on the same side. I think the pots are a bit close. That looks good. I can see some silk screen. I guess front tilt's going to be dim. You get a good feeling of the. Be good to keep U1 out, because that will definitely get hidden. Would be nice to have these out like this. I think I might actually do that. Makes it much easier to read when the components are in. Although it does look a lot nicer when the reference designators are within the box. Although I definitely hmm. Actually, I think I prefer the designators inside. It just looks nicer. And you can sort of read them. The only place you can't read it is under the chip. But because these have like round bodies, definitely visible. Don't want J5 to be visible. Um, 18. Yeah, that looks good. Now I'll just do the routing. What am I doing? Doing horizontals are roughly across. Um, bottom is horizontals, top is verticals. So you see it going across here, so I'll do it underneath. Uh, right here. If I do verticals, I'll say that's a horizontal. See, I'm breaking the rules a little bit as I'm going along. Oh, so now this is going to be tricky. What have I got? It's there. might actually break some of these because it's quite good to keep continuity in the ground frame. Oh, that's close to the edge. Right down here, get the bio get across. Might change that. <coughs> when I'm at the end, if I see any top layers that's blocking, if I see any horizontals that are blocking the ground plane and could just be a top layer, then I'll change them. Oh, 
R2 and R16. R2. Going around each other. These are still on ground. This goes up here. In theory, I should go on this layer. One hour twenty so far. I hope you're sufficiently bored. That's the CV. That is our oh, resonance. Oh, we have the capacitors. Beautiful. Nice to move all these um, parts a little bit away from the edge, like that. Annoyingly, that means these parts. If you root it again, that goes up there. See, I've broken, I've broken the rule here. now put another bar there that go like that this what is this oh they're not grounded They're disconnected to each other. There we go. Refill the ground plane, and there we go. This has to go down until it reaches roughly here. Oh look, I've closed the thing again. Woohoo! I don't know 
why it does that. How long have I been doing this for? 1 hour 26. I should be able to get it fully rooted and then I'll just stop. Then we'll start a new session to finish it off. We want to take this one right down. Let's take it along a bit. This wants to be here. See how um, if you stick to the strict left, right, up, down, left, right, bottom, up, down, top layout, you can. Um, Avoid a lot of headaches. Then you can just go back over it afterwards and add some improvements. I mean, that's a bit annoying. Might be better to go that way. Doing it right now. It's very simple this layout, which is great. The bottom layer, top layer, let's get to 12 volts. Let's get to it here, can't we? That one. Oops. Yeah. That's from the output of the ATA into the buffer. That actually looks like all of it. Use DRC. I'll show you. Yeah, DRC works. On DRC. Unconnected items, five. There's a connection here. Ah. The middle connectors. I'm not all connected. Oh yeah, of course, look. It's a bit hacky, but you have to do this. I like to do them all just to show. There we go. And DLC again. This is not connected. Oh, that's from when we moved. again from when we moved.
Okay. Woohoo, everything's connected. There's fire relations. Oh, uh, I can get clean up tracks. This will this will remove. Oh, you can't see that. What if I do this? Yeah. This will remove any little tiny bits of track that are. That will help our DLC. DRC design rule check. There's some silk screen problems. Yeah, so now we've, all we've got is silk screen problems and overlapping courtyards. We can't help some of the overlapping court courtyards because we've done this where the jacks connect to each other. I can show you. Let's turn off. Ah, right. So we don't really want these. I'm going to get rid of them. You can't see the dialogue I'm doing, but basically I'm making them invisible. Maybe if I close this, I'll be able to see. Yeah, there you go. I just have to click this one here to make them invisible. They don't make any sense to us. What I might do, here's another useful dialogue. It's Edit text and track property. No, edit edit graphics properties. And you want to do it by reference designator. Filter item by parent reference it's J. Well, I can't remember in KiCad if it's is it dollar or is it and. Or is it just asterisk? And I want to change. I want to change the values. And they have to be of J. I can't remember the key though. And I want to make. Um, change them to front silk screen. Yeah, it's not that. How do I remember that? Is it a dollar? No, it's not dollar. And was it hash? Or I could just do J. Ugh, I'm going to have to look it up. Uh, he had text. No, um. The dialogue called text and graphics properties. Here it is. I need the Oh, you can work it out if you do this. If I just put in a random component. Oh no, but it's... Oh, labeling. Oh, I can't remember what they use. Is it hash? Oh, question marks. It's question marks. 
like that. I can't work it out. I'll have to do it manually. Oh no, it's dollar. Is it dollar? worked? Yes, it worked. So now on the front silk screen, you'll be able to see audio in, band pass, low pass. What's that look like? that format. We'll do it in one. Oh, it's not audio in one. It's, um, CV. Shut off. CV. Audio in one. And pass out. It's good to label them. Out. Low pass out. The parts have values. So on the pots, also, um, let's go ahead. What's, can I change the font? Yeah. The great thing about KeyCut 7 now is you can use any font to this one. Use Dosis. Semi bold. again. Why have I lost the browser? Ah, for some reason I closed the browser. Anyway, Text. so I think that's a good place to stop. I'll probably do more finessing and then I'll come back. It currently looks like. Do I have to do that? Oh, it's annoying. I need to find a better way of doing this. It looks like this. Very simple. 
think I'm gonna make it a kit. You know, thanks for watching. I hope you're sufficiently bored. Uh, and on my next video, I will be completing this and ordering it. That took one hour forty. Shows you this is quite a simple board. So you imagine what a bigger project might take in terms of time. Uh, I hope to order these next week. Thanks for watching, if you're still listening. Bye.